Okay, so as we close out 2018 and we go into 2019 with presumably more rumors regarding next generation consoles, and keep in mind, based on the current rumors, we'll probably see reveals of those machines as well at some point, maybe the midpoint of 2019, maybe the later half, but it seems very likely that's kind of what we're working our way towards. And many of you feel that's just too soon. You're still enjoying your PS4s today. And that's understandable. There's still a lot of great things coming to PS4 in 2019. You have to remember, even if the current timeline is correct, we won't see a PlayStation 5 or the next gen Xbox consoles until mid 2020. It's about two years out. And so I think for this video, we're actually gonna go over PlayStation 4 in 2019. Some of the games you can expect, uh, what you guys are really excited for, but also what Sony should be doing to keep PlayStation as a brand very relevant as they go into a transitional period between supporting one machine and announcing a new one. Two thousand and nineteen is an absolutely loaded year for PlayStation Four. There's a lot of great games coming, and for good reason. These are games that we've been waiting a very long time for, and all throughout the year it's looking pretty good. But more specifically, January and February are going to be very busy. There's a lot of big budget games coming out, a lot of big titles that everybody's been waiting for. And I'd like to preface this by stating that this isn't every single game coming out when I'm showing you the dates of certain titles and whatnot. But certainly, I feel like these are a lot of the standout titles that people have been watching and and thinking about buying and picking up. And so you'll see uh, that there is a lot of really good stuff. For example, the Resident Evil 2 remake, which I know a lot of people are very excited for, and I am as well, and for good reason, because the game looks so good. And that's kind of what we've talked about a few times when it comes to remakes or even small remasters or trilogies, which is that they really take the time to do it right and do it well, and they take care of what the original game stood for and stay true to the original source material. And that stays true for a few other titles that we'll talk about later in this video. The Occupation, you see, is a very ambiguous title, and I think that's what I really enjoy about it. But you'll also notice that this year, there's actually a good amount of fighting games as well. So we're not only gonna be seeing Dead or Alive 6, but you'll also see Jump Force, which is a new IP. And Jump Force looks very fascinating for a number of reasons, and uh, it's the kind of game where I feel like it, you know there's a chance that it might have a few issues or whatnot but I think it's got some staying power and I think we might see a lot more of this in the future and then there is Mortal Kombat 11 which we'll see later in the year uh, but there's also Metro Exodus and this game looks fantastic as well I actually have to go back and play the first few metros myself I had the collection and I just haven't gotten around to it but man that game is shaping up to be really good and then there's Anthem now Anthem is a very interesting title for a number of reasons most notably well the game's release date it has a firm release date, but there's a myriad of rumors surrounding the game saying that the game is not going to hit its release date. And so it's kind of a guessing game at this point, because if the game hits its release date, then good, hopefully it's, well, a great game and it's compelling as EA wants it to be. But if it doesn't hit its release date, then that adds even more credence to a previous PS5 rumor we discussed not that long ago, where a particular user on Reddit made a bunch of claims regarding PS5, and one of his other claims offhandedly alongside PS5 rumors was that Anthem was not going to hit its release date, and he actually stayed pretty firm on this and that Anthem was not going to hit its release date. So if it doesn't hit that date, then we can kind of add more credibility to those rumors that he had previously mentioned, and that is kind of like the fun part here. I'm almost hoping that the game doesn't come out so we can really sort of analyze those rumors even further, but then again, we don't have to wait that long for a PS5 announcement as it will probably come at some point mid to the later half of 2019. Now, 2019 does have its fair share of new IP, which is good because we need something a little fresh, and there is a good portion of sequels coming out in the year, like The Division 2. Uh, but Sekiro Shadows Die Twice, this is a bit of a crowd pleaser. A lot of people really looking forward to this game, and I think that's because it's a From Software title. They're stepping out of their comfort zone a little bit. I'm sure it's still going to play very familiar, you know, if you've played a lot of From Software titles, but I think that's why we're so excited, is that it's something just a little bit different. And then there is Days Gone, the PlayStation exclusive that is coming within the first half of the year that a lot of us are looking forward to and for good reason because it looks very good and you know it's a great thing that Sony moved that game out of its original release date from February 22nd up into April because that specific date was very crowded that whole month is very crowded and I think Sony Ben was absolutely going to hit that release date. It wasn't necessarily a development problem. It really was a matter of letting the game have some breathing room, and it really does need that breathing room as well, because when you sort of stack it up to all those other games, I think you might not see it get the attention that it really 
kind of deserves. And then the Crash remaster as well, that Crash Nitro remake, I know we're also looking forward to that as well, alongside Shenmue 3, which is a long time coming, and I think 2019 will be the time that we'll finally see that game come out. And then we get to the dreaded TBA 2019 category. So all of these games are slated to come out at some point in 2019, but we don't actually know specifically. And the developers may have an internal target set. They may have an idea of, you know, where they want to release it, whether that's a particular release window or an exact date. They can't give out the actual details publicly because they're just not sure if they'll actually hit it. So some of these games may even get delayed into 2020. Now, I think most of these probably still will hit 2019. And actually, given where we are at this point, if they don't have a release date yet, then it's very fair to say that we won't see these games at all in the first half of 2019. Maybe some of them will get a release date early in 2019, but you have to figure that most of these are probably going to release around the fall or holiday season. And there's no problem with that because we need these games to fill that area. The holiday season is, of course, the busiest season, and even fall is very busy as well. There's many games that come out around that time frame, and there's just games that we don't even know exist just yet, which will also be announced and released within that time period. Now, for that later half of 2019, you probably will see Journey to the Savage Planet, which looks interesting, but it's, you know, we don't have a whole lot of details about this game just yet, so we don't really know what's going on. The Man of Medan will probably be very big, despite the fact that it's actually small, because it's part of the Dark Pictures Anthology, which is a episodic release of games from Until Dawn developer Supermassive Games, and that will be a very big title for sure. And it will be multi-platform as well, so the developer will get a lot more attention this time around, which I think will be very good. Psychonauts 2, I think this is a title where we can kind of look at this and go, eh, this might not hit 2019. I don't know. Maybe it will, but... Uh, as I've said, there are a few titles in here where you're really sort of questioning if the game will actually come out in this year. And then there's Storm Divers. Now, this is actually a semi-bigger budget game from Housemark, which has a long history working with PlayStation, Housemark's done Resogun, Super Stardust, but they've gone on record to say they do have a AAA game in development as well. And we discussed that not that long ago, which is that maybe Sony is the publisher for their new game coming up. And maybe we'll see that get announced in 2019. You have to figure maybe they will do something like that once they release Storm Divers so they can keep uh, some eyes and attention on the titles that they're working on. Then there's also Skull and Bones. This is also a very big title that is seeing no following whatsoever. And it's a very ambitious title, and I think we're going to really enjoy that one as well once we see more footage of it. Then there's The Outer Worlds. This is also the Obsidian game, followed by The Wasteland 3. Both of these titles which are being developed by a Microsoft studio because Microsoft recently acquired both of these studios. And while Doom Eternal is probably going to be extremely fun like it always is, the big sort of elephant in the room here is Cyberpunk 2077, which many people are very excited for, but this game is very circumstantial. There is a very good chance this may not come out in 2019 and may go into 2020, but you know, it's almost like you can't even have a conversation about its release date because we really have to see where it falls in line in terms of PlayStation 5 and the next generation Xbox consoles because the game is more than likely a cross-generation title. It's just a matter of where it falls in place in terms of those systems. Will it come out on PS4 and Xbox One first, or will it be announced day and date with those other platforms because the game still needs a lot of development time. I mean, it really is, uh, it could go either way I feel with that title, despite the fact that the developer is being a little bit more confident with showing us the game. But now we can get into Sony exclusives. These are the things PlayStation fans need to keep their eyes out on for 2019 because it is going to be a very big year for PlayStation 4 when it comes to things you can only play on PlayStation 4, like Concrete Genie. And this is from Pixel Opus, one of Sony's first party studios. These guys recently did Entwine not that long ago. And this is more of an artistically approached game which may not see big commercial success or maybe even that much attention, but maybe it will be the kind of game that does do critically well, and I think Sony kind of knows that they might not see a return financially on that game. Then we'll be seeing the Medieval remake, and I think it kind of speaks for itself. It looks fantastic. It's going to play just like the original game, or at least I hope it does, and that's all that needs to be said about that. Now, of course, we're all kind of wondering about Dreams. Will this game finally come out? I certainly hope it does. The game was supposed to come out in 2018. Media Molecule didn't hit that. They promised a beta. They just barely delivered that at the end of 2018. And now we'll get a semi-open beta in January so more people get their hands on with it. And to be honest, I'm pretty confident that the game will actually be fantastic, but I'm not so confident that the game will do commercially well. In fact, I think it might be a failure and not sell that well at all, which really frightens me because Media Molecule does make 
very good games. And I mean, so good to the point where they're the kind of developer we need in the industry to do these sort of different projects because not many other developers with that kind of budget, well, Sony's the one giving the budget certainly, but not that many developers take that kind of budget and do something dramatically different with it. Then there's Death Stranding, which is very much a cyberpunk scenario. Depending on next-gen consoles, who knows where this game's gonna fall. Now, I guess Hideo Kojima and even Norman Reedus have been open about how the game is going to hit 2019 at some point. I hope that's the case, but uh, I feel like this game could certainly slip into 2020, which at that point is gonna be making it a cross-gen title, maybe even day and date with those platforms, but again, that's highly dependent on what goes on with those reveals. Ghost of Tsushima will probably come out in 2019. I don't have any reason to believe that the game won't, and that's despite the fact that we haven't seen that much footage of the game. I think we do need to see a lot more of it to understand if it's going to be a great game or not, and sure, I have confidence in Sucker Punch, but I would still like to see more of the game. Uh, I just for some reason think that this game is going to be fine. It's going to come out on its release date, and it's not going to have any problems in terms of possibly being delayed. And then there's The Last of Us Part 2, which is probably many people's most anticipated title of 2019. Now, will it hit that year? I think it will. I think it will be a holiday title, if I'm being honest. And you have to sort of look at the timeline of what has gone in the past. The Last of Us came out 2013, and that was kind of the cross-gen title at that point in time. It came out for PlayStation 3 in 2013. We knew about PS4's existence in that place. And while certainly The Last of Us did get ported to PS4 once the time was appropriate about a year later, I think The Last of Us Part 2 will be in that same place, which is that we will see The Last of Us Part 2 release in the holiday season, but we will get a PlayStation 5 reveal possibly in mid-2019, maybe even, you know, a little bit after that, but we will get the existence of PS5 before we get The Last of Us Part 2, and that's kind of where that game will fall, and then you will see The Last of Us Part 2 get ported to PlayStation 5 with a higher frame rate and resolution, because you'd presume the game is not going to be a consistent 4K 60 frames, certainly. It might not even do that on PlayStation 5, so you'll see that game get ported over as well. Or at the very, It's very certain that the game is being developed in conjunction on PlayStation 5 hardware already. Then there is PlayStation VR. Yes, we'll cover this real quick. Uh, there's so many games for PlayStation VR 2019. Quite honestly, I couldn't even fish out the specific release dates or release windows. There's too many games. It would have taken this video way too long to make, and there's just so many uh, good games coming. And, you know, the first year and a half, two years of PlayStation VR, you saw a lot of closed off games. And when, what I mean by that is, you know, the environment was closed off. There wasn't a whole lot you could do. And sure, they were compelling and, and interesting, and they made the medium... Uh, kind of show what it's capable of. These are the kind of games where we're now seeing that. Even though PlayStation VR is still a first-generation device, now you're seeing these developers really explore what you can do with VR. And so you're seeing a lot of these first-person shooters allow you to change out your guns and duck and cover and, and get a lot more involved in the virtual reality aspect. You're seeing games go crazy with the color palette if they're not necessarily a graphically intensive game. You're seeing visual novels on the platform now, which I think is also a very good approach to using VR and maybe a more comfortable manner for people that suffer from motion sickness, but there's no doubt about it, 2019 is going to be a big year for PlayStation VR, and it reaffirms Sony's commitment once again that a next-generation PlayStation VR also could maybe be even bigger than what we're seeing right now. So what are you guys looking forward to? Well, I asked you on Twitter what are some of your most anticipated PS4 games for 2019, and you certainly told me. A lot of you said Dreams, but most of you said The Last of Us Part 2, which is pretty great. There's also a lot of days gone in there for sure. I'm actually surprised by that. To me, it seemed like a lot of people weren't paying attention to the game, but a lot of you certainly are. You're looking forward to Days Gone. Resident Evil 2 is also a big one. I think a lot of people are very nostalgic about that one. They're ready to replay that game and all of its beautiful goodness. And while many of you do want Cyberpunk, you also kind of know that the game might not come out in 2019. Death Stranding, also a crowd pleaser. Everybody's waiting for that. They're probably just waiting to figure out what the hell it is, and I'm right there with you. I want to know what it is. Which brings us to our wrap-up. How should Sony handle 2019 when they do this transitional period? And I think it's pretty much what they've done every single time with a console launch, which is that they need to commit to the current platform and let consumers know that they are still going to keep supporting it for as long as they possibly can. Of course, their history shows that they've always done this, but consumers still like that peace of mind, and so Sony announcing more titles well into 2020 I think is very important. So despite the fact that we're going to see a very big focus on new hardware this year, and Sony's going to make that very keen, they do have to spend a portion talking about PS4, which is why I honestly think, and this is a bold claim I'll make, but 
if you saw last generation, Sony revised the PlayStation 3 for a third time. That's something they had never done with a home console before. Now they did this with the PSP, where they revised it multiple times beyond just that second time, but maybe we could see a PlayStation 4 super slim. Maybe you could see at the end of 2019, a slimmer PlayStation 4 at an even smaller MSRP price cut that would be across the board worldwide. Many people would instantly call me crazy for saying that, but it's just one of those things where look at the company's history. I think it's certainly possible we may see something like that down the road. And maybe 2019 would be too early. Maybe it would be early 2020 they'd announce something like that. But I think given how many PS4s they're selling and how healthy the platform currently is, I think they want to extend it for as long as they possibly can. So that's why 2019, I feel, is very important to not only announce games, a lower price point, but maybe even new hardware. And they could certainly slim down the box. They can do that. Some people think, oh, no, it's too crazy, this, that, and the other. When it comes to technology it can be sometimes exponential despite the fact that we're seeing diminishing returns in terms of graphical performance there is very quick advancements in terms of the sizing of cases and motherboards and airflow sony does slight model revisions quite often actually where they just kind of misplace and move around some of the internals and i think they could do that again with the playstation 4. of course that's a bold claim because there's no rumor suggesting this whatsoever but again I think maybe it could happen, and I think maybe it's something the company should consider. Now, some of you have been asking me, is Sony going to buy a new studio? And honestly, I really don't feel strongly one way or the other. About five years ago, I said, yes, they, they should buy a new studio, and I think they will, and then they didn't. So then about two or three years ago, I said, no, they're not going to do it because clearly they haven't done it yet. If they were going to, they would have. At this point, I think they should, but I don't know if they will. I really don't. I think it can go 50-50. I think the studio should maybe consider bolstering their lineup a little bit more, but on the other end of the spectrum, they really don't have to. They've got some of the best developers available, so it could really go either way. But with all that said, that is PlayStation 4 in 2019. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it, and if you haven't yet, subscribe for the best PlayStation news, reviews, and updates here on YouTube, and also, Merry Christmas and Happy Holidays. I really hope you guys are enjoying your time with your families, friends, giving some gifts, getting some gifts, and playing some games. I know I'm going to be doing the same because I have a huge backlog, and this video proves that there's still a lot of awesome games coming out, so I need to really, I need to really catch up. But um, I'll see you Friday for Let's Talk PlayStation, and as always, thanks, thank you again so much for all the support. So that's it for me in this video, and I'll see you all in the next one. You take it easy.